Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on March 22nd. It's a Friday, so it's not really midweek, it's end week, but you know, sometimes we never get around to it at the right time. Nonetheless, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. And we're gonna do what we like to do, and that is to do our daily lectionary texts and pray about it and talk about it and see what the Lord might have for us. So um, why don't you open us in prayer today? Okay. Would that work? I know. What did you mix into that? Well, mix up a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Gracious Lord, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to hear your word. And I pray that uh, it uh, it transform us, and that uh, we we hear you as we read read uh, the scriptures today. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our opening psalm is Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. And Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, 
wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew scripture text today is from Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 through 35. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go so that they may worship me. For this time I will send all my plagues upon you yourself and upon your officials and upon your people so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence and you would have been cut off from the earth. But this is why I have let you live, to show you my power, and to make my name resound through all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Tomorrow, at this time, I will cause the heaviest hail to fall that has ever fallen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Send to therefore, and have your livestock and everything you, that you have in the open field brought to a secure place. Every human or animal that is in the open field and is not brought under shelter will die when the hail comes down upon them. Those officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord hurried their slaves and livestock off to a secure place. Those who did not regard the word of the Lord left their slaves and livestock in the open field. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven so that hail may fall on the whole land of Egypt, on humans and animals, and all the plants of the field in the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire came down on the earth. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt, and there was hail with fire flashing continually in the midst of it, such heavy hail as had never fallen in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the open field throughout all the land of Egypt, both human and animal. The hail also struck down all the plants of the field and shattered every tree in the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, there was no hail. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord. Enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, and need stay. you need stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your officials, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was in the bud. But the wheat and the spelt were not ruined, for they are late in coming up. So Moses left Pharaoh, went out to the city, and stretched out his hands to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured down on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned once more and hardened his heart, he and his officials. So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 
but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 32 and going to verse 45. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. Then uh, they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him, and after three days he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen, 
they performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their water into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came and the young locusts without number. They devoured all the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn of their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold and there was no one among them, no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham, his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the land of the nations and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our final Psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Those are some long passages today. <laughs> they were long, long passages, lots. long psalms, long narrative. Right. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have read, or at least we haven't read for a long time, um, the uh, any of the plagues of Egypt. Right. And I, um, I sometimes forget details. You know, because I, I, you know, I've obviously read it before, but thinking about the details and how there's this whole conversation between the sixth plague and the seventh plague, mm -hmm. and what really stood out to me was God said He was going to send the plague of the hail, but warned everybody, bring everything inside, because anything left outside is going to get killed. Right. And some did, and some didn't. And uh, I think it was um, doing some study recently on, on uh, God's character and how he has always been a patient and a compassionate God. And, and so finding here, even in the midst of the plague, look, I'm going to send a plague so that you will see my power. Right. But he wanted his power seen without destruction without without death right and so he gives them the warning bring right. it bring it all in and um yeah and then he brings you know all of the hail and the thunder and there's fire mixed in with the hail and all of the stuff and you're like yeah that's power right uh and then pharaoh goes okay time to go <laughs> and right then, uh, well, make it stop make, make it, stop. it stop right um. hmm uh, that really did. What was that psalm? That was uh, was that the one forty eight? The uh, yes, yes. Um, I believe so. That you're talking about the he um, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and, and hail, hail, snow and, and frost. frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command. Yeah, I guess you know we don't we don't always match psalms up with other right. scriptures, sure. but yeah, there it is: fire, hail, snow and frost. Right. They're all at his command. Yeah. Hmm. And how does it relate to everything else? Well, I 
my first thought on all of these is the power of God because and he says that you know he says I will I will do I'm doing this so that you see um, see just how much power I have and um, and with that um, as you turn over pick either one but with the second Corinthians um, it that whole passage in second Corinthians is um, let's see here for we do not proclaim ourselves but we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slave mm -hmm. and so it is still this recognition of of Christ it is this recognition of God as the ultimate um, power and in the ultimate authority right um, verse 7 especially right but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us um, right well and even as it goes on you know you look mm -hmm. at that psalm you know we are or excuse me not the psalm but the exodus we are crushed uh, uh, we are afflicted but not crushed we're perplexed but not driven to despair persecuted not forsaken struck down not destroyed he God gives us he, he wants to he doesn't want to crush us he doesn't want to to forsake us doesn't want to destroy us um, that which is I, I why he sent Jesus right because right, right that is yes that because is the answer to that because, because then he became the one who was crushed for us right 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 yep that's that's the great connection um yeah popping back over to mark you know jesus is like look this is what's going to happen they're walking up to jerusalem all the disciples are like don't don't go up there jesus they're they're going to try they're going to try to kill you they're, they're going to get you and he's like hey look let me just tell you again what's going to happen uh i'm going to get betrayed and handed over condemned to death handed over mocked spit flogged killed and three days on the rise again and they're all like yeah <sighs> I don't get that right I don't I don't I don't get that hmm yeah and so even James and John their request I think they're still thinking in kind of human earthly terms it's like we want we want power we want the authority we want the glory we want the whatever might happen to be jesus we know you're it but we want to be on the right hand left hand we, when you come in we the glory we want we our want, position yeah, we want it to be our position and jesus is like really is that really let me just explain it to you this is how the world works what you're asking for but this is not how i work yeah i become humble i become the slave i become the servant of all and that's what you need to do too, right? right. I, I think it's, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump here for just a second. I'm gonna stay here in this uh, Mark passage for right. just a second. And he says, "Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with?" And and you know, as he's asking that, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? You know, in in the garden, he asked God to take the cup. Mm -hmm. He did what we couldn't do, but then he goes on and he says, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism from which I am baptized, you will be baptized. Mm -hmm. But I think the answer to that, we stopped in verse 12 in 2 Corinthians, but if you go back to verse 13, but just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise, also, uh, raise us also with Jesus. And will bring us with you into his presence. Mm. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Mm. But the same spirit that did the work of Christ, in Christ is found within us. And right. so even though we didn't hang on that cross, we didn't die, we didn't resurrect, but yet we did. So we yeah. will drink that same cup. Right. We will, but just as we face that same right. death, we face that same resurrection, mm -hmm. and so, um, which is good news. It's, it's great news. It's very contrary to what the world would say. You know, I know we're we're here. This is the Friday before Holy Week starts. We've got Palm Passion Sunday this week, and then the whole week is meant to be. It's the last week of Lent. Um, we. Uh, from a Jewish perspective, we're approaching the Passover, and so 
I, I would hazard the guess that next week our lectionary texts will take us to that final plague, that right. Passover plague. You know, here we are. Uh, what's the number on that one? The seventh plague. And so the, the uh, Passover, the sending of the angel of death, would have been the tenth plague, obviously. So we're going to get to that place. Um, and the whole of the Jewish identity was in that event, you know, Passover, which then leads to Exodus, that they are saved by God's power, and then they become his people. Um, and set free. Set free from the bondage of slavery, and then changed and mm -hmm. stood out in the wilderness with God. And, you know, we should ourselves be reflecting upon that. Christ is bringing the ultimate Passover himself, Right. Um, and if he's bringing the ultimate Passover, and then as we are freed from our slavery to sin through his death and resurrection, then we are called to be, you know, transformed people. You know, right. we should no longer look like you know, Egypt. We should no longer look like the, the ways of the world. And so there's that contrast with Peter and James. Hey, let's, let's do it this way. And Jesus is like, Billy, no, no it's not... It's not how it works. Hmm. And so I guess if we if we think about how he, all of what's taking place in the Old Testament is certainly the foreshadow of Jesus, mm -hmm. the demonstration of God's character right then and there. Right. He wants to free people from their slavery. He wants to demonstrate his power uh, without being that destructive. Mm -hmm. And and here, um, and then I guess then the, the commonality is uh, what was their response? What's our response? Are we are we going to be obedient to what God's called us to do? Or are we going to harden our hearts? Mm -hmm. I got what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Wow. And lean back into my own understanding or our own understanding our own desires our own um, right right psalm 105 is a lengthy psalm that talks right. about the whole the whole thing um and then we we lean again in on that psalm 22 which mm -hmm. is the psalm that jesus prays while on the cross Mm -hmm. uh, but even on the cross, even in Psalm 22, there's there's hope. Right. And um, well, in that Psalm 105, it is that full, it is that full narrative. It's that full story of all of these things. And but yet, even when I sent famine, I had sent a man ahead of you right and so you have this authority you have this hope you have and i think that just speaks to god's character over and over and over again mm -hmm. even in judgment or tribulation it, it doesn't he is there in that moment and he is preparing a way there is hope right beyond whatever that situation um, they found themselves in the situation that we find ourselves in there is right. hope. There is hope. Hmm. Um, I know that there are people uh, out there, you know, and, and, and we have our struggles too. There's no doubt that there are struggles at First Presbyterian. I know Natalie and her family have issues. Me and my family, we have issues. And I know that there are people in our community that really have issues. But um, if anyone out there is really struggling, if anyone out there is... Um, questioning or doubting God's love for you uh, in the midst of these challenges that you're facing, um, hold fast to the promises of Scripture that he's there. Like Natalie was saying, he walks with us uh, through those challenges. Um, he, he provides for us a way through the difficulties. Um, and I, I, I do still find it a little mysterious, like, come on, God, why can't you just take all of the problems away? I think I would prefer that. Um, but I think when we look back at the narrative texts, we see that um, God has something bigger 
in store, something that we don't always understand, something that even the disciples of Jesus didn't always understand. And so mystery is okay, you know, concerns and, and struggles are okay, but, but do have faith and confidence that God is uh, with you, that God is with us, that, that God is for you. And even in the midst of the challenges, how, to, how, how can we be increasingly obedient? You know, he said, hey, this is gonna happen. Bring your livestock inside, you know? So if you're making poor choices, if you're making poor decisions and you're suffering poor consequences, okay, start making better ones. I get that, but trust that God is loving and God is forgiving and he wants what's best for you as we listen and obey and trust. Anything else? I think that that was good. All right. Well, let me uh, close this in prayer since you opened. All right. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word to us today. I am grateful that we are always in your presence. And even as we go through uh, cycles in life and we're approaching a very holy week, uh, we know that every week is holy because you created it. Um, Every life is precious because you hold them in your hands, uh, that every relationship is worth um, trying to find some way to reconcile, or at the very least, uh, um, you know, to not speak negatively about people. Uh, you, you're, you're a good God that reigns and rules over everything, and you tell your people to not pursue uh, things the way the world does, uh, but to become servants to become um, even the slaves of all um, as we follow in your footsteps lord as you lead us and as we follow i i pray that you would give us the courage to to be uh, steadfast in our faithfulness to you uh, that we really would love and serve other people as as you love and serve people um, help us to depend upon your strength and depend upon your goodness and and trust that you are going to fill us up as we empty ourselves on behalf of others. Lord, we do pray for this church. We do pray for broken and hurting hearts uh, in our community and beyond. Um, be present, Lord, with people who need to hear your voice anew and afresh today. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Look forward to seeing you. Single service on Sunday, the 24th. Sunday school at 915. One service at 1030. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.